After the events of Dishonored 2, Emily is back on the throne, no one's out to get her more than the norm for your average empress, and things seem to be going well for the country in general. Enter Megan Foster, aka Billy Luck, competent ship captain and former lieutenant to the Whalers, the supernatural assassins with whom Corvo had dealings with back in the original Dishonored. Megan is gone and Billy is out to play once more, looking for the mentor and father figure she once betrayed. The assassin Dort, who wears the mark of the outsider. Together, the two take on a very ambitious task to kill said outsider. But how do you go about killing a god? It's no easy task, and it will require taking on an insidious cult in all its shapes and forms, several fanatics, no small amount of Karnaka guards, and a very unfortunate mime. The gameplay of Death of the Outsider isn't too different from Dishonored 2. Being a standalone expansion means that the game is built in the same engine, reusing many familiar assets and even a level from the base game, if heavily modified and smaller in scope. The chaos system from previous games is gone in this one, and that makes a lot of sense. You in the role of Billy Lark are a child of the streets, and your actions are on a much smaller scale than those of an empress or her regent. It makes sense. While society will bend to its ruler's personality, the actions of one deranged or gentle assassin won't make that much difference to the everyday life of Kernaka, until that very last choice, of course. And killing cult members, if we have to be honest, it's a bit of a public service, isn't it? Another very big, very important difference is, this time around, you're not playing someone who actually carries the mark of the outsider, and so your powers are heavily limited in scope and non-upgradable. The three powers you've access to are this place, which is akin to a blink and far reach, a mobility power that, unlike the latter two, places a marker in the world, which you can then teleport to on your own whim. It allows for certain new tricks in the playbook, which are, I won't lie, very entertaining, especially when you use this Place to pop into someone and shatter them into bloody little bits. Semblance allows you to steal the face of unconscious individuals. Stealing the faces of unnamed NPCs unlocks some unique dialogue which adds a degree of flavour. It's a bit of a gimmick and not everyone will use it, especially if you come in swords swinging. And you will, oh you will. Foresight is your dark vision like ability, which enables you to get something like an astral projection out of your own body, which is of course tethered and will not let you go too far away from your body. It allows you to see bone charms and loot as well as guards. As for weapons and gadgets, the normal array of grenades, spring razors and nastiness make a comeback. The few new enemy types have interesting new attacks and none are cooler than the Oracular Sisters, which make their first on-screen appearance in the fourth level of this game. New weapons include the Hyperbaric Grenade, which is a non-lethal approach to taking out groups of angry enemies via compressed air. The hook mine, which draws enemies to it, whether placed on the floor or on the ceiling. And the Voltaic Gun, which is an assassin's wrist weapon, very cool and very useful both, and shoots both lethal and non-lethal munitions. The last major difference is, Billy can accept a number of contracts, secondary quests which will get you plenty of coin or bone charms. Some are pretty damn difficult, while others are very easy, like subduing a mime and chucking him off a cliff to make it look like suicide. You know, your normal assassination stuff. I did most of them, but my patience eventually ran out on one or two. That's about it for the differences in gameplay from Dishonored 2. If you need a reminder of what that game was like, you can take a look at it in a previous video linked at the end of this one, and of course, hosted on my channel. As for bugs and general optimization, there might be some improvement, but it's not too great. Dead of the Outsiders still crashed, and I had some issues with the anti-aliasing settings for some time before I finally found a configuration that worked for me without murdering my frame rate.
Killing a god ain't easy, kids. It takes extracting your old mentor from the nasty situation he's found himself in, and then following up on a few unclear leads while hoping for the best. The best gets pretty good, though, when Billy discovers that the weapon used to give birth to the outsider is in a heavily guarded safe in Kanaka's bank. What follows has to be one of my favourite ever missions in a Dishonored game, a supernatural bank heist which can be approached in so many different ways and which marks the return of the clockwork soldiers from the last game, which were my favourite enemies. It's a big, complex, challenging level which, even after I played through it, I still felt I had only scratched the surface off. In between missions you will speak with Dodd, who's very different from the gruff assassin we played in the Dishonored 1 DLCs. He's an old man, with very little fight left in him, and it shows. The conversations are good though, they show the true fondness these two have for one another. The closest thing to a father-daughter relationship either of them could ever hope for. He didn't offer me his mark, just said some cryptic shit, and left me with this. I never knew what the black-eyed bastard wanted. Be careful. The outsider's gifts come with a price. You won't know until it's already been paid. <coughs> I didn't have much choice. Neither do I. My connection to the void is fading. We've got to act soon, before it takes me forever. With Blade in one hand, and the other missing, there's one more thing Billy needs. A way into the void, after a visit to the Witch's Den from Dishonored 2, in a short tussle with some religious zealots, Billy gets her strange void hand on where her world and the void are closest. During all this, the outsider has been speaking to Billy, apparently aware of her and Dawes intentions. He's not worried so much as he is absently curious, which I feel is very true to his character. Billy Lord Taylor again does a great job as the character. His last time talking to Billy in particular is, I think, a very good interaction between the two. Doing out all the fear and power the Abbey of the Everyman tries to hide. You have uncovered me more than most. What you do now will change the world. You again. You know I used to wonder if you'd speak to me. I almost wanted it. Every street kid, every desperate wretch pushed to the edge. They all wanted you to speak to them. Why didn't you? Why me, now? You know I'm here to end this. You and this disgusting cult. People have come to this place for centuries wanting many things. To elude death, to seek forbidden knowledge, they are never satisfied, no matter how much they take. Not even the dead find peace here. You will find another relic of the cult's heart. A piece of whatever God came before my time. You will find the people who murdered me. When I knew them, they had names and ambitions. Now, they wander this place. Their minds snared up with terrible secrets. Keeping hidden the unspeakable ritual that made me what I am. Deep in the void, they put a knife to my throat and tore my name away. You have found the knife. Maybe you can find my name in the black viscera of this place. If you care to look. The last mission eventually gets you into the void, which, I won't lie, I'm a bit disappointed with. I don't know whether it was marketing or I misunderstood something, but when I began playing this game, I had expected that we would, in fact, have two missions set entirely in this strange, twisted, dreamlike world. Instead, what I got was not even an entire level, more like half a one. In this one, I will admit, I rushed through after the first few minutes of wonder and secondary quest solving. It's visually stunning but not as brimming with originality in terms of design as I had hoped, which is a pity, really. The developers over at Arcane really had the opportunity to do some mind-blowing level design with this, and I can't help but feel that they've wasted it. Spoilers, I'm about to discuss the final choices in the game. With a name like Death of the Outsider, I wonder what it'll be about. Funeral arrangements? The heart of the void is not as Billy expects. The Outsider is not a nightmarish monster to be slain after terrible combat. Instead, Billy finds him a living statue, unable to so much as move a finger to defend himself. In front of him, awaits the spirit of Dort, who demands the gods' death for all the misery the ones marked by him have committed. But there is another way. This is what the Eyeless want to know about. I'm at the center of the Void itself. 
And you're not even some kind of horror I need to face down and fight. You're at my mercy. But you've always been at the mercy of bad people, haven't you? You said I had a choice. Well, I'm here to make it. You don't deserve this. No one deserves this. I won't let the world turn on someone suffering. I see each moment of my life slipping from my fingers. It frightens me. Dowd? Why are you here? What are you? Look at us. Trapped here. An eternity on a butcher's block. Waiting for the knife to fall. There's nothing left of me but this. Doubt. I'm here. Look at me. I know that name. I know you. And with blood. And masks and blades raised. Billy Lurk. I even remember when you hated me. And now you followed me into the void itself. You brought the knife. I can't hurt him. There's nothing I can do. Only you can kill him. How long have I waited here? Too long, old man. There he is. The outsider. All this time dreaming in the void. I wonder if he dreamed about this moment. Go finish it. End his miserable life. He almost looks like he's in pain. Is this really what you want? Is this really what he deserves? You know how this ends, Philly. I found another way. The Outsider lived and breathed once. He spent his days on the streets of some forgotten city. These cultists took everything away from him. Even his name. But I know what it is. His name is the Mark. Only the dead can read it. If we give that back to him, he'll be free. He'll live out the rest of his days as a man like any other. The Mark? No. You're here to kill him. You can't ask me to do this, Billy. Not after everyone he's hurt. Not after everything we've done. Why is he to blame for what we did? He gave us a way to fight back. He never lied to us about what we might become. You know what I became. We looked down on Dunwall as if we owned it. As if we could drown it in blood. Wow. He knew we'd turn into monsters like him. He always knew. And his belly. He can't do anything but harm. I saw the cult who hurt him. He died once at their hands. Look at him. This wasn't his choice. He never asked for this power. Let him end it. Put him out of his misery if you pity him. It's a better future than anything that might wait for him out there. But does he have to die? Years ago, I did something terrible to you. I didn't deserve to live. But you let me walk away. You gave me a chance. Let him live, Dow. Let him have the life he lost. Like you did for me. When you left Dunwall, I hoped you could live a better life without me. As your future wouldn't be killing for coin until someone came to betray you. Forgiveness is a rare thing in this world, Billy. You're better than I was. Down. There will 
Billy. For the last time. I can taste blood in my mouth. I can hear Doubt's voice in my ear. You have done something impossible. We let you live. I can take you out of here. These eyes were closed for centuries. And I saw everything. Bound here, I walked through the minds of generations. And now... You're free. I can't take back what was done to you all those years ago. No more than I can take back what was done to me. But now you have a chance to be something new. To be something better. It must be strange knowing what you know. Seeing with old eyes all the secrets of the world. We've both seen the worst in people's hearts. But in the end, I gave Dowd peace. And maybe you can find some too. There's so much doubt. But there are some things I know are true. The Outsider is no more, and with that, the world will change in ways none of us can know. But the Void is still there, echoing just beyond what you can see. And there's no one left to say who will and won't be touched by its magic. Whichever way you choose, that last line is important. Outsider or no, the magic of the Void remains and it will seep into the world. Now, if or more likely, when Arcane and Bethesda revisit the world of Dishonored, I will be very interested in, in seeing how they handle this monumental shift in storytelling. The Outsider and his mark have been the foundation of what transpired in all three games of the series, after all, and leaving him behind is a very bold move. And in the case Bethesda decides that this is where the franchise concludes, I do think the end of The Outsider is a fitting place to draw the line. I sure would like to see this new world without The Outsider, sir. Dishonored Death of the Outsider is more of the same with just enough new things added in and all bits taken out to feel fresh again. The gameplay as addicting as ever, even if the lack of a chaos system removes that extraneous reason to not murder anyone and everyone on sight. But maybe that's just my inner psychopath showing. I will admit, some of the story lost its steam during the fourth mission, but the ending more than made up for it. I remain pleasantly surprised by what this franchise offers, and I'm looking forward to what comes next. The Void remains a mystery, a world of magic and arcane knowledge that the death of the outsider ultimately proves is the origin of the ancient god's power and not the other way around. Yes, I know, some of you will say, we already knew that, and it's only two, but now we have extraneous proof, and that is good. Whether you enjoy speaking with rats, stabbing people, or hooking them up to the ceiling, that of the outsider has something to thrill you with. There's few better assassin murder simulators out there. Very many few, in fact. Dishonored Dead of the Outsider gets 11 out of 13 bone charms. Because just like me, it's too lazy to put those few last hours of work into getting everything unlocked. And by that I mean that there are some problems and it should have cleaned them up better. I'd love to make an in-depth theory crafting video about the Outsider and the Void. This has always been the most interesting part of the lore in Dishonored for me, and I have some ideas worth sharing. For now, so, thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video, press that like button, maybe subscribe for more videos that are just like this one, well, mostly, maybe, possibly, and even share with your friends. Now, I wouldn't like to make you uncomfortable, but you should also follow me on Twitter. You twit. It's free, and it'll make you a better person. Probably. Uh, I don't know how Twitter works, really, so maybe not.